Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rennarb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, and the places that you can get them, Kickstarters that they come from, all that stuff, fun, whatever. And uh, so that kind of goes right into what I have to say next. Um, I just want to put it out there that uh, I do not receive review copies of any of these comics. Um, everything that I review are things that I have personally bought or backed on Kickstarter. And uh, they are things that, they are comics that uh, piqued my interest enough for me to actually push my dollar towards it. And uh, so if I'm telling you to back something, it is because I actually have an interest in this comic book or story or art or whatever it is. Um, not because someone is telling me to, even though at the end of the shows that I do, I usually say, hey, if you're running a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, or have an indie comic, let me know about it, and uh, I will talk about it on my show. First off, uh, if I do that, I will talk about it because it interests me, and uh, I will give you a shout out on it only because I, I believe in the comic. Um, if I look at the book and it, everything about it just disgusts me, I will not give you a shout out. Sorry about that, but just a forewarning. Um, yeah. So, with that out of the way, I am going to start with a comic that I found on Kickstarter called I Am Hexed. This is I Am Hexed issue one with, it has art by Kirsten Thompson, Christiane, oh man, I am, I apologize first uh, that I am bad at pronouncing names, so bear with me on these. Christiane Guillenardo Goudreau and lettered by Taylor Esposito and this cover is by Little Corvus and the Kickstarter exclusive cover is by Meredith McLaren but I have the Little Corvus cover it looks like. Okay and it, so uh, one thing I like about this is the paper quality is a little bit like a, it's kind of newsprint stock. Um, so that's that's one thing that's neat about it. So I am hexed one here is uh, it's a it's a nice little intro into this world of witches in they're in Washington D.C. and uh, they're not really secret, but they are kind of uh, controlled and governmented. So, it is a nice intro into this world of Hexed, and uh, the main character we get to in be introduced is, um, her name is Charlie, and she has a friend named Jaya, and Charlie goes to stay with Jaya, who is an ex of hers, and uh, because she goes to stay with this ex, and uh, because she is being tracked by... A mysterious organization so that is the intro into this first issue and um, it was a fun read I really like enjoyed it the art style as you can see here is a little on the cartoon side it borderlines cartoon and realistic so uh, that, that's pretty cool for me um, and I do like as you can see here these characters Charlie and Jaya, they're pretty cool looking, and so that's issue one. Then we get off, go off into number two here. Let's see here, right there, and uh, so things heat up in this issue as as a group of called the DOI, the Department of Interior. It's kind of like a men in black situation. Let's see here, it shows them there. Um, they want to question Charlie, and Char Charlie lawyers up by, uh, well, she was having lunch with this friend of hers who is a lawyer, and she paid him a dollar to get him on, get him onto her side. And, but yeah, they lawyer up, and then uh, she and Jaya return home. And as you can see here, they had a message waiting for him at home. And this, they find out someone's been in their house, in Jaya's house, and uh, 
So they try and use location spells on it, but somebody has used wards to uh, to make it so that they cannot use these, cannot be tracked and lo use location spells. So that's pretty cool. Um, the witches here are interesting that way. And then, so then they go to, that's how we get introduced to a witch named Florence, who, as you can see here, uh, she's an herbalist, and I like how she's a witch, and she also uh, works a lot with science. And uh, because she's an herbalist, she has sunflowers for spokes as a wheelchair, as her wheel spokes in her wheelchair. And uh, yeah, I thought that was cool. So things heat up in this issue. <clears throat> oh, it, I forgot the credits. They had the same art team as the uh, previous issue. It was written by Kirsten Thompson, illustrated by Christiane Gilinardo Goudreau, and lettered by Taylor Esposito. And this cover was by Paulina Ganuchow. And it had a Kickstarter exclusive cover, which I don't think I have that one, by Becca Farrell. So, yeah, as we move into the third and final issue that I have, uh, there we go. That's an awesome cover right there. I loved it. And uh, in this one, I think we actually have a different different illustrator. So we it is this one is still written by. Kirsten Thompson, but new illustrator, Amagoya Ajure. Let's see, does it show right there? Is it focusing? And as usual, lettered by Taylor Esposito. And this cover is by Little Corvus, and it had a Kickstarter exclusive cover by the previous artist of the other two issues. Paulina Ganuchow. So, yeah, and uh, I do, I, I really like uh, the illustrations in the third one. They kind of get a little more uh, outside of the cartoony, so that's one thing I liked about it. And um, so we start to see, okay, well, I lost track here. Um, Hold on a second. All right, so we start off with Charlie and Jaya, and they're using their uh, powers to to find clues at a crime scene. Let's see here. They're at a crime scene. Um, this girl attacked them, and uh, she bit a poison pill and died on the scene. And so they are invest. They are trying to figure out where to go from here and they decide to uh, use broomsticks because portals might be tracked by this other organization so that was a cool little uh, introduction into why they travel by broomsticks and there's our scientist, hybotanist, herbalist, whatever you want to call her and uh, alright so Charlie uses her magic to look for to look like someone else and attends a party. Oh yeah, there's an awesome page. In the back of this issue there are uh, um, breakdowns of the page, so that was cool. So she uses her powers to look like someone else and attend a party. And uh, while there she is attacked by uh, another group of witches and they fight it off. Fight each other and uh, yeah. That's cool. There's breakdowns of the cover. That was cool. I liked seeing those. And let's see where... Here we are. There's the breakdowns of that page I was telling you. That's really cool. I, I really like that. And um, yeah. And then, oh yeah, my name's on the thank you page. That's really cool to see that. Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics. Right there in the G's really cool when people do them alphabetically. A lot easier to find your name when you do that. And so um, I'll, I will, well I, I really like the book. 
um, all three of them, and uh, I have issue four coming to me. I'm back in the Kickstarter right now, so I will tell you more about that. I think the notes are in my Kickstarter section. Um, so there is a Kickstarter for issue four of Hexed right now. I Am Hexed is the official title of that. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. The coloring is awesome. The illustrations are awesome and the writing. It's, I, I'm not very political, so uh, it is kind of interesting. It was written in a way that I could understand it, so I enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like reading an X-Men book, um, but with witches. It reminds me a lot of, uh, there was this Motherland show that I watched on Hulu. So it's very similar to that, Motherland, where the witches have always been in, uh, in our reality, and so this is that version of that. So, yeah, if you want to check out more from this, uh, I Am Hexed, check out the Kickstarter for I Am Hexed running right now. I will tell you more about that later. Next up is... Oh yeah, oh, I forgot, it came with a sticker and uh, some pins. I got some pins, check these out. These are those buttons, you know, the safety pin on the back kind of pins. And uh, yeah, so I got the pins and I got a sticker to slap onto my comic book boxes. That's really cool. Oh yeah, and a temporary tattoo, it's tiny, I almost forgot about it. So yeah, temporary tattoo that says Born Hexed. There it is. And that's, whoop, and I dropped it. So that's where we are with that one. Next up on my list that I read is a comic called Duplicant. This is Duplicant issue three. Duplicant is a story about a, it's a future and they suffered through a pandemic. And this pandemic, it was uh, shutting down people's organs. And this doctor comes up with a solution of making duplicate organs. And uh, so if your organs shut down, you you get duplicate organs. And uh, it's a really cool way of, uh, it, it's a different version of a future. And so while he's investigating on how his organs are being used, he gets kidnapped and someone harvests something from him in this issue. This whole issue is, uh, it was mainly kind of a uh, flashback thing where while he's under the knife on the table, he's suffering some memories and uh, these are not pleasant memories most of the time. Um, their memories, oh sorry, that was not really a safe for work. Yeah, it's breastfeeding. If you can't handle breastfeeding, deal with it. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, and then there's also an investigation going on trying to find out where this doctor scientist went. So, here's here's a flashback scene of him at the beach with his family. And this is actually a memory of how the pandemic started in, in his situation. And uh, so, someone collapses on the beach and he goes to help him and then his wife comes to him because a, his daughter collapsed on the beach also and so he tries to save her and yeah it's it's really sad it gets to you and uh yeah i i love the way this was written and i love the way it's illustrated i mean uh yeah it's crazy crazy good and the colors are what really make it pop is it's it's colored in a way that uh just brings it right to life perfect illustration for this kind of book and uh, yeah so he, he wakes up on the hospital bed and where we go from there is that's that's where it's going so issue four is actually on Kickstarter right now too this is another one that's on Kickstarter I uh, bumped it up on my read pile with uh, knowing that the Kickstarter was coming out because I wanted to get it read before I get the next issue so that is Duplicant number three. Duplicant four is on Kickstarter until March 4th. So it, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a future utopia set in a time when uh, a pandemic is killing people, shutting down their organs, 
and this scientist creates a way to sur make them survive. But unfortunately, the people that get these organs are suddenly thrown into an insane amount of de debt and they can't pay it back, so they become indentured ser servants. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know if living would be worth becoming an indentured servant, but yeah. And here's some cool postcards that came with it, with the Kickstarter. There's one. Oh yeah, that one's a cool one. Pretty sure that one was used as a cover. And there's one. So yeah, duplicate number four. Check out the Kickstarter. I will tell you more about that later. And next up, it's not an independent comic, but uh, it's one that I really enjoyed, Mr. and Mrs. X. Uh, this is one I tried ordering a long, long time ago, and it took a long time to get it. Um, so Mr. and Mrs. X here is written by Kelly Thompson and illustrated by Oscar Bazaldua, Bazaldua and uh, David Lopez. They share halfway through the point they switch over to different artists. It's colored by Frank Diamarda and uh, Nayeon Kim. And it's lettered by VCs Joe Sabino and Travis Lanham. With cover art by Terry and Rachel Dodson. I love that team. And uh, yeah, so there we go. Mr. and Mrs. X. It was a super fun ride read. Um, I really enjoyed it. You get to see the wedding. The wedding really only took up about two or three pages. And, uh, well, maybe even a little more than that, but then the honeymoon is like two or three pages. Very quick, and then all of a sudden, since they're in space having a honeymoon, they decided they would be out of the way on a ship, just no one to bother them. And uh, Kitty Pride says, hey, uh, we have a problem. We need, since you're the only ones in space, and I can't get anybody else, everybody's busy or on assignment or missing. And so the assignment is they have to go and retrieve an egg. And while they're retrieving the egg, some uh, another team, let's see here. What were this other team? And now I don't know who it is. Anyway, <clears throat> this other group of people, superpowered people, attack and Rogue gets shot out into space, and she gets saved by none other than Deadpool. Deadpool has the egg there, you can see, and he wants it because there's a hefty price on it. Pretty cool that way, and uh, so, yeah, really fun stuff. The interaction between Deadpool and uh, Gambit and Rogue are, is pretty hilarious because Gambit's hitting on Rogue the entire time, and uh, yeah, they just got married, so... But yeah, he takes off with the egg, all that fun stuff. And then, uh, then suddenly, you find out, where did it go? The egg isn't actually an egg, it's another person, a mutant. It is the daughter of Charles Xavier and, well, what's her name? I can't ever remember that name. The alien with the feathers and stuff. Ah, shoot. I can't remember. Anyway. But, yeah. So, she's running around. She looks like Rogue for a minute. She can actually change her appearance. She's a very powerful telepath. And, uh... So, she was choosing to look like Rogue because she thought that that would keep her from getting hurt. And then, uh... So... They're... Uh... Ask, they ask for Deadpool's help, and he goes, well, of course I'll help you. I'm, I'm not going to try and sell a, hu a person. When it was an egg, I had no problem stealing it, but now that it's a person, I don't. I, I want to help you guys. And so there's this really cool page here where uh, Gambit and Deadpool are fighting alongside each other. Really cool stuff. So, yeah, it was a crazy fun read. When they get back to Earth... Uh, they have a little reception, all the friends over, 
that's some fun stuff. So I I had a good read on this. Um, I don't know if there's any more. It took me so long to get this. I had it on back order forever from uh, my comic shop that I go to, Gamers Asylum in Ogden. So yeah, it was it was a fun read. Um, I highly recommend it. And let's see what else have I got here. Now on to the mailbox section of my my show. What did I get in my mailbox this week? I well this is it's been a while since I made a show, but uh, I actually got this a little previous a little later a week ago. Um, so this is Miskatonic High. They're one of my favorites, and uh, I got this cool little invite to a party. It says Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios, you are invited to the Yellow King Inn. That's a pretty cool way to do it. I like how they do it that way. And uh, this came with issue 9 of Miskatonic High. So I can't wait to dive into that, throw that into my read pile. Heck yeah. Um, I always enjoy backing and reading Miskatonic High. That is one of my favorites. One of my favorites to read. And uh, next, the other thing that came in the mail is a comic called Aster of Pan. Oh, let me hold it right. So this is just a the making of Aster of Pan. It's a it's pretty stocky book in and of itself. That is pretty cool stuff right there. So it came with a patch. And it came with a huge coin. This is from uh, Magnetic Press. So it's an Aster of Pan foxes on one side and then their Magnetic Press uh, ink pen on one side. Then I got this awesome pin. I'm a big collector of pins, as you know. I uh, even have my own Retinard pins. And here's a cool postcard right there. And I got a oh I got a lot of prints. There's a print, and there's a print, and that's just a white piece of paper. Interesting. And check the book. There's the book itself. It is hardback. It is huge. It is. Uh, it looks like it's about the same size as my Paris 2119 book that Magnetic Press also made. And uh, then it came with the that's packing slip. You don't need to see that. So yeah, that's some cool stuff. Really cool artwork in this one. Can't wait to read that. So that will be going into the read pile. And yep. Yeah. So throw that into the read pile as well. And now I'm going to move on to the Kickstarter section. Hashtag Kickstarter comics. Kickstarter comic. All that fun stuff. Um, so, first up, oh shoot. Let's see, what day is it? February 19th. Alright, so this one, Super Best Friend number one, uh, that ended yesterday. So, that one's a cool one. Um, I actually have Jupiter Jet in my reading plans tonight. Alright, so next up on here is Babylon Working. Oh, this one ends on the February 19th. That's today. Uh, Babylon Working is a comic about a bunch of pirates. They, uh, they're they trying to steal something and they're they're, they stop a shuttle on its way past the moon. Make it land on the moon and they find out that there's more going on than uh, than what's going on. They en end up releasing a monster and fighting that. So if you're interested in space pirates and releasing monsters and having to fight monsters and a weird cult going on thing, check out Babylon Working. It is on Kickstarter right now just for today. It ends pretty soon, but 
chances are it, they'll throw that on Indiegogo. So as soon as they do that, uh, I will uh, keep my eyes open and let you know about that one. Because Dirty Work at the Crossroads from the same crew, Dirty Work from the Crossroads, and number three, is on Indiegogo right now. It was on Kickstarter. I missed it, and now I'm backing it on Indiegogo. So check that one out. It is on Indiegogo until February 24th, I think. I don't know. I'm not, I have no idea how Indiegogo works. It is confusing as hell. Their website, it's just, it's a mess. It's hard to navigate. It's hard to even post your own things on there to, to uh, campaign. So I, I, I only go on there when someone throws me a link and says, hey, my book's on Indiegogo. So Dirty Work at the Crossroads is on Indiegogo right now. I'm backing it there. And uh, check it out. Ink. Ink is a second collection of 12 by 12 inch black and white prints that uh, Philip Bond has uh, made. He made them for Instagram and now he's assembling them into the book. They look so freaking awesome. Well, it's not really a book. It's just a collection of 12 12 by 12 prints that you can hang on your wall, you can frame them, you can, you can do anything you want with them. So that looks really cool. The, it's crazy good art. A lot of astronaut looking artwork in that. So check it out. Hmm. All right. This land, number one, is on Kickstarter until February 28th. What if you had the powers of a god? Ancient gods have been awoken in the future of New Zealand, and they are not happy at all with the way they the way they find the world. And so, uh, these are from this is from a hit girl writer, Mark Abnett. And uh, yeah, it, it's really cool. Uh, they have a cool pin. It's like a hand in petroglyph looking form of their uh, Aroha Comics pin. And so I'm I'm backing the comic, but I, I have not decided if I'm going to up it and get the pin also. Um, but yeah, uh, check that one out. Uh, it's got some really cool stuff. They've got Pele characters in there that are uh, made of lava, and uh, that's what interests me because, uh, as you know, I... I love Polynesian cultural and culture, and uh, the characters Maui and Pele. It's really awesome to see other people use those, and uh, so I'm back in that to check out uh, how they do that. And it's got a cool story premise, all that fun stuff, really cool stuff. Um, so check out this land number one on Kickstarter until February 28th. One Last Job, number one, is on Kickstarter until March 1st. An assassin on his way out of the job, last day until retirement, and uh, the industry doesn't want to let him go. So it's for fans of people that like the 007 series, the Bourne Identities, and uh, the John Wicks. So if you're a fan of those and assassin stories, things like that, check out One Last Job. It is 22 page. Uh, black and white comic from Catalyst Studios Comics and uh, that's pretty cool check out one last job number one before March 1st Crow Creek is on Kickstarter till March 2nd it is a zombie thriller following a mysterious outbreak unraveling on a Native American reservation it has killer artwork uh, when, I, when I saw this come across my Twitter feed it reminded me of Stuart Eminem and Lee Weeks. A lot of Jay, 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 a lot of Jay Lee vibes go, coming from it. So I checked it out. The story sounded amazing, so I backed it. Um, yeah, Crow Creek. It looks amazing. The artwork looks amazing, and who doesn't love a zombie story? Um, yeah, uh, The Walking Dead was one of my favorite reads, and now it is over. So you got to find your zombie fixes somewhere, right? So check out Crow Creek on Kickstarter till March 2nd. Check it out because you will be impressed by that artwork. All right. Crimson is an art art <clears throat> Crimson is an art book from Abigail Larson. Abigail Larson, if you've seen her works, I saw, 
I follow her on Twitter, and uh, it she always does amazing artworks, uh, like her Beauty and the Beast, or whenever she draws uh, her version of a movie, like um, Beetlejuice, or things like that. It's always amazing. Uh, she has a style that you instantly know it's hers when you look at it, and uh, it's something that I wish I could... I could get two in my own style, but uh, yeah, it's crazy amazing. 232 pages in this uh, book that she is creating of her artwork, and it comes with a slip case. So check out Crimson, the art of Abigail Larson on Kickstarter until May 4th. Really cool stuff, and follow Abigail Larson on Twitter if you want to see the artwork that I'm talking about. I'm sure you can find it anywhere you Google Abigail Larson. Next up on my list is Miracles on Kickstarter till March 4th. Comic refugees in the real world... Uh, hold on. I read that weird. Comic refugees in a real world family drama. Um, all families have secrets. And the Morgans is just... The Morgan secret is just a little bit more astonishing than yours. It's a hundred and page... 120 page book and uh, the artwork looks amazing superheroes refugees from other countries and planets and uh, yeah uh, just check out miracles on Kickstarter until March 4th the artwork will blow you away and uh, the writer Joseph Glass he he has done a lot of Kickstarters so it, this is not his first Kickstarter. He has done quite a bit, and they've all been pretty successful. Check him out. Miracles on Kickstarter till March 4th. Slightly exaggerated. Number two is on Kickstarter till March 10th. A dying girl must steal back a sacred artifact from a crazy cult in this whimsical fantasy. Um where religion is the law. Think of Tomb Raider and Star-Lord and Indiana Jones and put all those characters into one person and you will have the main character of this slightly exaggerated. It is crazy. Like, uh, it's action from the minute you open the page to the last page and the artwork is insanely awesome. Like, uh, it's just colored in a way to make... It, you definitely feel like you're not on Earth when you're reading this book. Um, the the artwork is amazing, and the writing it it's just hard to explain. Um, in fact, there's not even a lot of words on the page. It's just crazy good artwork, and it tells a good story. So check out slightly exaggerated on Kickstarter right now until March 10th. I might do a reread of that book too. Yumi, <clears throat> a spy fatale and a baddie royale original graphic novel. Um, Yumi is 136 pages. It's a graphic novel. Um, I don't know if it's going to be hard or soft. But Yumi meets uh, Richard, falls in love at first sight, and Richard disappears without a trace. So that means Yumi, who is a hacker and a trained combatant, has to go on the hunt for him. So she she meets a Richard, falls in love with him, and then she has to find him and save him. So that sounds awesome. The artwork looks insanely awesome. I would love to see this as an animated movie. It looks so awesome. And, uh, yeah. So check that one out. I think that's from 12 Gauge Comics. It is on Kickstarter till March 4th. Yumi. Spy Fatale Batty Royale. Vampire Bloodlines number two is on Kickstarter right now until March 14th. Uh, Vampire Bloodlines number one was a comic I backed and read, and I loved it. Uh, you could go back just a couple episodes and you'll find that one. And yeah, uh, it was a different size book. I think it was only three by six. Really small version, but the artwork was perfect for that size. Um, fellow Kablam printer people uh, people who print through Kablam like I do and so that was cool and uh, 
yeah, this one comes with an Ivy cosplay co uh, cover, which is what I backed it to get, and uh, because I I follow Ivy cosplay on the Twitters, and uh, she's awesome. She does a lot of cool things, and uh, yeah, so I'm I'm I can't wait to see where uh, the story goes from here. Last we left off, uh, Bianca, the queen of the vampires was challenged by another vampire and uh so that's where we're going from there um so check out vampire bloodlines number two on kickstarter until march 14th you can get the cosplay cover or the illustrated cover or both or all four issues if you want issues one two in cosplay and illustrated and here we go with uh i am hexed I Am Hexed is what I just read. I Am Hexed number four is on Kickstarter until March 18th. Equality is Magic, a comic book about the ongoing political struggles of modern day witches. And this is the final issue. Witches have been a part of political fabric since the nation was founded. Witches came out in the 1960s and uh, have been on the back burner since then. So check those out check out uh, I Am Hexed. What was the other one I was... Duplicate. Yeah, where's my duplicate at? Um, yeah, when is duplicate on? Okay. So, I Am Hexed. Check it out on Kickstarter till March 18th. Sorry, I'm very amateur here. Okay. Next up on my list is Hollowed, number two. Um, Hollowed, well no, this is Hollowed 3, I think. Hollowed is the story of... The world of Hollowed gets a little larger as friendships are formed and enemies are revealed. Two detectives are hunting down brutal a brutal serial killer that hollows out his bo the bodies of his victims. And it also has a soundtrack to this. Uh, Hollowed is actually on my reading list tonight. Um, when I go to Plasma tonight, I will be reading Hollowed and Jupiter Jet. So, check out that one. Uh, my name's on the thank you page, too, so that's cool. And, uh, yeah. So check out Hollowed on Kickstarter. The art uh, made me think of uh, when I was reading Spider-Gwen. The, the artist is a lot like the Spider-Gwen artist. It's very graffiti-ish very uh, chaotic and I think will go well with the story that I read tonight. And let's see. Alright. There we are. That, oh, I might as well give a shout out to Duplicant one more time. Duplicant is on Kickstarter till March 4th. And uh, yeah, it was a good read. Uh, it made me tear up when uh, the father had to deal with losing his child and so check out duplicate number four on Kickstarter till March 4th it is a, a dystopian future dealing with a pandemic that uh, wiped out a lot of people and a scientist found a cure for it and coming soon to Kickstarter I don't know when this is coming to Kickstarter but it is glaring Glarian of White Ash. White Ash is a favorite comic of mine so I can't wait till Glarian comes to Kickstarter and so I could back that and uh, read more about the White Ash world. So and that's all I have for Kickstarters now. Um, lately I have been watching uh, I get the Picard seasons uh, through my Netflix disc subscription so I've been watching Picard and Batwoman when I'm at my work breaks uh, I just have 15 minutes to turn on my Wi-Fi and watch some Batwoman. It's a pretty good show so far. And, uh, oh yeah, and WandaVerse, I had to watch that this morning, first thing this morning. And, man, it's getting so good. I can't believe there's only two episodes left. And, uh, yeah, a uh, couple of my predictions have been coming true, so that's cool. And uh, I'm not going to say any more let you come up with your own predictions on that. I'm not one of those prediction websites. And uh, so check out Picard and WandaVision. Oh yeah, and uh, me and my wife watch Outlander together, and so when the season dropped 
on Netflix. Uh, my wife and I burned through that from one Tuesday to a Friday, just in four days. Just went nuts on that. And uh, so we we couldn't wait a whole year for the other season to come out. So we upped our Hulu subscription to include stars, and now we're watching season five of The Outlander together. Really good stuff. It's They're in the early years of America, 1970, I mean, 1771 and 72. So it's really cool watching it from that angle when, like, I'm right in the middle of Utah, so my knowledge of the East Coast history is not as good as say someone who lives there would be so but it's really cool uh, knowing some of the things that are happening and knowing where the country stands all that fun stuff um, so yeah those are some shows that I'm watching right now and uh, yeah so if you have a comic book like I said at the beginning of the show that you want me to check out a Kickstarter you want me to check out or an indie comic page like say you've got a web comic online somewhere or if you want me to check out your Indiegogo campaigns let send me a link you can message me or you can tag me straight in your Twitter post or Facebook posts at at Gary Bratner or at Renard Studios either way I'll see them and so if you want me to see your Kickstarter drop a link in the comments of this video on the YouTubes on the Facebooks on the Twitters Wherever you want to drop me a message, email me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com if you don't want it out there in the public. But either way, if I get an email, I'm probably going to say, hey, I got an email from so-and-so today, and he wants me to check out his comic about uh, Smurfs. Whatever. Anyway, um, so I will check it out, and who knows, you might be getting a backer just by sending me a link. So I do highly recommend you send me your links. Um, because I like nothing more than finding a comic that I believe in and enjoying that comic once I get it in my hands. So send me links to your comic books, Kickstarters, whatever you got going on. And looks like that's all the notes I've had for today. So I hope you enjoyed me stumbling through all this and, uh, and I hope you join me next week. Bye.